I'm Uwe Klein. I became a Protestant vicar because I like working with people and because I want to bring people closer to the joy and suffering of the gospel of Jesus. My name is Jens Schmidt. I became a Catholic priest because I experienced the Catholic Church as a very positive community in my youth. From early childhood, I wanted to take my faith in Jesus to work with a community of people. Protestant vicar Uwe Klein's church dates from the Middle Ages. It's damp and needs renovating. His congregation haven't been able to worship here since February. But fortunately, the Catholic Church isn't too far away. Father Schmidt's Catholic parish enjoys excellent relations with its Protestant neighbours. The Catholics decided to let the Protestants use their church for their religious services. Vicar Klein is allowed to use the church on Sundays, after Father Schmidt has finished saying Mass. Each cleric tends to his own flock. Shared ecumenical services are an exception. Why don't Catholics and Protestants celebrate their Sundays together? I can't give you an answer to that. I'm not able to. I really don't know. What would you think about it? I think it's great. It might become more necessary in the coming years when the churches receive less church tax income. That would lead to a greater need for sharing resources. At the moment, I don't think it's like that. Of course, it has historical reasons. Catholics and Protestants have been separate since the Reformation. Hmm. It's down to the leadership. The grassroots would do it. The churchgoers here don't understand why the top echelons of the Catholic Church limit the practice. Communion is a major stumbling block. The Vatican only allows ordained Catholic priests to celebrate the Eucharist and take communion only with fellow Catholics. But the churches in Orsoy take a relaxed approach to the rules from above. I think despite the different teachings and different beliefs about Holy Communion and the Eucharist, we can still be hospitable to one another because we share the sacrament of baptism and that ties all Christians together. For a long time, the people have unofficially been going to each other's churches to celebrate the Eucharist. Different religious services and different religious vows. Father Schmidt lives alone. A housekeeper takes care of the domestic duties. The Catholic vow of celibacy is aimed at making priests devote themselves fully to God. But Father Schmidt could envisage married priests, although he also sees practical advantages in celibacy. The advantage of living alone is having more time for the people in my parish. I don't have to share my personal time with another person. Someone who is married and has children must think of their family and find time for them. The advantage of the celibate life is not having to do all that. Protestant vicars aren't obliged to be celibate. For Uwe Klein, a life without his large family would be unimaginable. My job would be almost impossible without my family. My wife supports me, and that allows me to really concentrate on my parish. And I also have support at home among the family, and that allows me to offload a lot of stress. But there are many problems both men have in common. Their churches are unable to reach many people. The very young and very old attend church services regularly, but other generations have largely turned their backs on religion. The recent child abuse scandals in the Catholic Church have also made work more difficult for Catholic priests. When you offer trips for children or young people as a priest, you now have to ask yourself if their parents will be prepared to allow their children to go with you. These are the kinds of questions that play on my mind. Questions the Protestant Church is also asking. 
It fears that churches as institutions have lost their credibility. But what can local parishes do to change this? In my last sermon, I took a stance on the abuse cases. It's difficult because I don't want to trivialize suffering or guilt. I don't want to downplay anything. But I've learned that we shouldn't point a finger at others because three fingers will surely point back. No attributing blame, no higher moral ground. That's why Klein and Schmidt get on so well. They want to work more closely together in future. They know they can learn a lot from their respective faiths. As a Roman Catholic priest, I can imagine learning from the Protestants. There can be more democratic leadership in the church, more grassroots consensus. By that I mean more involvement of the flock. It would be good for the Roman Catholic Church. I think we can learn how to create more atmosphere during religious services by using candles, or maybe Protestant vicars should wear green robes. That would be something. Today, the vicar is leading a Catholic kindergarten group through the building site. He believes even the youngest parishioners should learn about each other's religions. Look, that's what the floor of the church used to look like. All Christians celebrated Mass together here before the Reformation. For the past half millennium, only the Protestants have prayed here. Klein remarks that now the people here are more concerned about a belief in God than religious affiliation and theological hair-splitting. I think we can only survive in the long term if we work together. Otherwise, the church of today doesn't stand a chance. We must think ecumenically. We have to look beyond ourselves, and every single small step in the direction of ecumenism is both necessary and positive. It would be interesting if ecumenical ties and friendship among parishes became permanent forms of cooperation, and not just a product of necessity because a church is being renovated. More and more children have one Catholic and one Protestant parent. Another good reason to work together, say Schmidt and Klein. They're ready to move towards Christian unity, even if the church hierarchies have serious reservations.